There are various tactics that we need to undertake. But there, there's, this has been known by people in the, usually in the religious communities, historically, of what type of tactics you have to engage in to try to stop draconian activities. And it dates all the way back to the, the White Rose in Germany, you know, when, when, the, when the government moves step by step by step to try to make legal every single thing that Hitler and the brown shirts wanted to do. And the fact of the matter is that they passed statutes authorizing them to take all the property from the Jewish people. They passed statutes, you know, authorizing them to arrest all the gypsies and stuff. You know, the, just the, the famous uh, Niemuller quote, you know, that, that uh, when, they, when they came to get the Jews, I wasn't a Jew, so I didn't do anything about it. You know, and then they came to get the communists, and I wasn't a communist, so I didn't do anything about it. And they came to get the socialists, and I wasn't a socialist, so I didn't do anything about it. And then they came to get me, and there wasn't anybody left to help. You know, I mean, that's, that's what we're looking at here. What we're looking at is the, the, the combined right wing of the Republican Party, the spineless conservatives in the Republican Party, not wanting to be characterized as soft on terrorism. The equally soft spined, you know, blue dog Democrats, the new more moderate uh, Democratic Party of Richard Gebhardt uh, in the Democratic Leadership Conference, uh, the chairman of the policy committee of which was Hillary Clinton, you know, and Bill Clinton, you know, the, the, these type of, uh, uh, if you will, mealy mouth, uh, middle moderate type uh, Democrats are terrified of being characterized as soft on terrorism, just as they were terrorized about being soft on communism. The whole thing that we experienced during the McCarthy era, you know, we're, we're having a replay of that exact same thing. And the fact of the matter is, you have to nip this in the bud yes. as soon as it starts. And this thing has gone across the line now. And there's no reason why people in the city of Santa Cruz need to tolerate this. Because the, the, the people in the right wing of the Republican Party and the mealy mouth, the middle marginalist Democrats are just looking to see if we care enough about this. That's right. Because if we yeah. don't, and John Yu, who actually wrote uh, a number of the legal briefs authorizing torture, you know, under the W. Bush administration, has written a whole <coughs> book on the national security constitution, national security constitution. He's argued that the passivity of the people in the face of an executive branch action taken unilaterally, the, the passivity of the people in the face of such a thing is a common law authorization of that act. That it's you know, he's, he's, he's written it out. Uh, so it isn't as though we don't know what these people are saying. Okay? So our acquiescence in the face of knowing about this uh, is being taken as direct evidence of our, our ratification of these kind of actions. And, and it shouldn't be surprising because what's happened, what we saw happen is W. Bush gets caught wiretapping all the telephone conversations in the country, monitoring people's uh, uh, not only telephone calls, cell calls, you know, uh, uh, computer communications, etc. And what's the Congress do? The Congress rises up, you know, and passes a statute authorizing them to do it. You know, but you only get to do it under these certain circumstances. You know, I mean, and, uh, and, and that's, that's exactly what's happening. You know, because the people in the Congress are being bribed by the major right-wing organizations, the Koch brothers, etc., mm -hmm. you know, to support these kinds of activities. I mean, the fact of the matter is, if the people of Santa Cruz can't rise up and stop this, then it is a very bad sign for our country. But the contrary is, is that once the people of Santa Cruz do rise up yes. and do something about it, it's a very good sign for our country. And then it can start, you know, county by county uh, across the state. And once California comes on board stopping this, then we then move to the other, the other congressional districts around the country that are part of the Progressive Caucus. There are 63 Congress people that in fact come from cities and congressional districts where they have universities where they actually read books, you know, and they actually think about the Constitution. They actually have discussions. They actually come to meetings on Sunday morning, you know, to talk about things like this. And so that we have to set an example for the people of the country 
that we have to show them that, you know, we're, that, that, but what is it? I mean, are we afraid to go knock on the door of a neighbor in, in, in this city and say, look, it, uh, I want to have a conversation with you about this statute that's been passed and signed by the Obama administration. I know that you're not going to believe that it's true to start with because I didn't believe it when I first heard about it. But I want you to see this, you know, I'm not, it's, you know, we're not seven-day Adventists trying to get you to join our church, you know, uh, we're, we're not harassing you, we're here to share information as an American citizen with you, and we want you to come to understand this. And what we have to do, each and every one of us in this small group, we have to be able to overcome that twinge, that kind of, well, this could be embarrassing, you know, they could say no, they could say get off my front porch. You know, uh, they could call you a communist. They could call you a terrorist lover. They could, you know, oh, gee, you know, that's too fucking bad if somebody does that to you. You know, I mean, if we are willing to be able to endure that type of potential conceivable response, then we're selling out. We're, in fact, so afraid that we can, in fact, have the same kind of thing happen here in our country that happened in Germany, that people were afraid. They were afraid of being embarrassed. They were afraid of having people respond in an adverse way to them. They were afraid of being accused of not being adequately patriotic. You know? And that's exactly how it happened. And yet people still to this day say, how could that have happened? How could that have happened? This is exactly how it happens. That feeling that you have about not wanting to be embarrassed you know, walking up to a neighbor's door and trying to get them to understand what's going on. That's how it happens. That's exactly how it happens. Okay? And when you start getting past that thing, it's just like getting back into shape. You know? It's like being, uh, here's a set of stairs. I don't know I'm going to be scared. You know, I mean, the, you just walk up the stairs. It hurts. It's hot. You feel terrible. You know, and after you've done it for a little while, you start, hey, that's not that bad. You know? and that's what you've got to do here. You, we we got to get back into constitutional shape. You know, we we are we are becoming constitutional. So that's what, that's what this is all about. So we're here to offer you an exercise program, uh, uh, a, a twelve step program, uh, to try to get back into shape, to try to recover from being addicted to our fear. You know, to being addicted to our comfort levels. Because that's what these people are doing. These people have put us into a warm pot of water, and they're turning up the heat step by step. And what I'm suggesting to you is you jump out of this pot right now. You know, because it's only going to get hotter. Because we are very familiar at the Christic Institute, and now the Romero Institute, we're very familiar with who these people are. We're very familiar with what it is that they have in mind. And you need to remember that in the Iran-Contra, uh, so-called Iran-Contra scandal, which should have been the Iran-Contra federal criminal prosecution, right. you know, of like two dozen of those people, they should still be in Leavenworth prison, these people. But they weren't. They were let off on the whole thing. And the special prosecutor, Lawrence Walsh, in his final report said, you as Americans are going to live to regret this day when the, you allowed the Democratic and Republican Party to let these people off with no substantial punishment whatsoever. Because these people are going to come back very soon, sooner than later, he said, under the rubric of anti-terrorism. That's what he said. And it's because this, this, this guy, Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North, derived, remember how they keep saying, how did a young Lieutenant Colonel get all of this influence and power? He was, the, he was the director of anti-terrorism for the National Security Council of the Reagan-Bush administration. That's where he drew his power from. And he knew how to use it. He knew how to intimidate people about being afraid of being accused of being soft on terrorism. And this was way before 9-11. Way before 9-11. This is in 1982, 83, 84. You know? I mean, you know, this is years and years before this alleged caliphate, you know, that of, of this right, this 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 extreme uh, ultra conservative fundamentalist Islamic caliphate wanted to take over the world. You know, that's our job, taking over the world.
world. You know, that, that's exactly what George Carlin used to say. Who are these people trying to take over the world? That's our job. You know? And that's exactly what we're looking at. We're looking directly at that because the, this is the group of people that, that at the end of the Cold War, in 1992, or 19, December 31st of 1991, again, 10 years before 9-11, 10 years before 9-11, immediately upon the, the voluntary dissolution of the Soviet Union, came back into the Oval Office on the following Monday morning with Paul Wolfowitz, uh, all working for Dick Cheney yeah. as the, the Defense Secretary under George H.W. Bush, and crafted the 1992 United States Defense Department policy planning guidance document calling not to, not to start reducing military funding because the Soviet Union had dissolved itself, not talking about dissolving the Central Intelligence Agency that had been created by the National Security Act of 1947 specifically to offset communist aggression around the world. Now that the Soviet Union was completely dissolved, not recommending that we reduce the military budget, we're proposing that we increase the military budget to take advantage of this unique moment in history so that we can establish full-spectrum dominance over the planet. That's their term, full-spectrum dominance over the planet, so that nowhere on the face of the planet could any force arise that could withstand the unilateral application of U.S. military power. You know, nobody has to be a rocket scientist to recognize what that is. That's exactly the agenda that was had by the Third Reich. Okay? And it shouldn't come as any surprise, because the Third Reich was funded by George Herbert That's Walker, right. That's right. who was the grandfather of George Herbert Walker Bush, who was the chairman of the Brown Brothers and Harriman, through the Union Bank of New York, that funded the purchase of the national headquarters for the fascist party in Germany. I mean, it doesn't take rocket science to know what's going on around here. Okay? So I'm suggesting that, that you become the White Rose. That we, we have to stand up. The White Rose rose in Germany to oppose what was happening, but it rose up too late. It rose up too late because there were a whole series of anti-terrorist pieces of legislation in power by the time they got mobilized that authorized the, the brown shirts of people to swoop in and tear down their offices if they so much as spoke out against the policies of the government. Okay? And that's exactly what's getting ready to happen here. And they're doing it. They're doing it now against so-called echo terrorists. That's right. They're sending anti-terrorist agents from the FBI into the universities and libraries after people who, in fact, are raising questions about fracking. Yeah. Ah. That's because, because what they're saying is, oh, anybody who starts raising questions about fracking could become a terrorist. Could, in fact, try to blow up their, their facilities and stuff like that. So we've got to get out ahead of time. We've got to engage in pre-crime. You know, this is the minority report. You know, they've got to bring in Tom Cruise and the uh, Scientologist to help them. You know? I mean, this is, this is pre-crime. This is going after people who are beginning to think about discussing opposition to government policies that could conceivably lead to them being terrorists. You know? That this is what we're facing right now. Okay, and so I'm, what I'm suggesting is, is that we, you, you, and I, and everyone else need to overcome the anxiety, the kind of sense of embarrassment, yes. the kind of discomfort level about you know going with a, a clip pad, you know, clipboard to the door of our neighbors and asking them to listen to what it is that's going on. Okay, that's that's all that we're asking of you. You know, we're asking about a little bit of time. To come to the meetings uh, every other Wednesday at the at the Romero Institute over here, into into, and I want to leave you with a, a, a additional uh, understanding that you don't know about, except for the people who came yesterday, is that the that the Tuesday morning, last Tuesday morning, there was convened in Rome a major conference called by Pope Francis to discuss the connection between global climate change and transnational corporate capitalism. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is, in fact, going to be announcing that he's going to be issuing a, a papal encyclical in June declaring that transnational corporate capitalism is the proximate causation of global climate change. Yes. Yes. Calling, calling for the establishment of an entirely new alternative economic order on the planet. And he is preparing to go before the United States
United Nations in September, the General Assembly, calling for the dissolution of all debt on the planet. Yeah. Calling, for a, yeah. calling for a jubilee yeah. year uh, out of the ancient Jewish tradition of, of the Bible, mm. declaring all debt to be alleviated in the world, leaving the banks holding the bag that they should have been bagged in back in 2008 by getting the billions and billions and billions of dollars of U.S. tax money given to them because they were all going to they were all going to take their chips and go home, you know, if we didn't give them that. So what I'm saying is that that you need to understand that there's getting set to be declared a major jubilee year. There's getting set to be declared a specific recognition of the direct connection between transnational corporate capitalism and the global climate change that's threatening everyone in the world. And you better believe how terrified that is going to make the people in charge of the Republican and Democratic that's Party right. in the country. Yes, that's true. And yes. they're going to view anybody who gets on board attempting to carve into their power as potential terrorists. <laughs> because they know that that's exactly what they would do if they were in our position. That they would take up arms, they would become violent uh, against the government if in fact what we see them doing to us was being done to them. Right. And we're going to be able to show them that we can do it without violence. We can do it through discussions. We can do it through organizing. We can do it through conscientizing. And the problem is they're going to identify that as pre-crime. That's right. Yeah. That's getting ready to work your way all the way to doing what it is they think you ought to do. If you really are going to take steps to effectively stop them, they think we have to go to violence. I'm telling you, we don't have to. I'm telling you that we can mobilize. We have time to mobilize. We still have access to adequate constitutional principles to mobilize. And we are going to be organizing the lawyers to help protect people on this and fight through the courts as is necessary. But we're not going to be depending upon the courts to support us because we've been through that before, back in the 70s. You know, the, with the Chicago 7 trials and everything else. The judges... You know, that like 80% of the judges were appointed by these people. You know, by, by Richard Nixon, by uh, Ford, you know, by, H, by Ronald Reagan or H.W. Bush or W. Bush. These people are constitutional criminals. Yes. You know, these people wouldn't, you know, these people think the Constitution is a ship that sits in the harbor in Boston. <laughs> you know, I mean, and, and they don't care about the constitutional rights. They're overly hostile to these constitutional rights. So we're going to stand up and fight for our constitutional rights, but we have to overcome our discomfort. And we have to overcome our discomfort. And we have to be willing to understand that there will be a tiny percentage of people who tell us to get off their porch, that call us off on terrorism, whatever it is they want to say. We have to be willing to suffer that type of discomfort in order to save our country, in order to save our constitution, in order to save, in order to save our planet, to be able to save our human family from these people. Because these people have not gone away. These people have merely stepped back from World War II and are still on the march. That's right. And they have to be stopped. Okay? And that we're the people that can stop them because we are the White Rose. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Yes.